sharing hybrid of Ericsson, Aaron Ramsey and Effenberg or destined to be the Swedish Halilovic? Just how good is Lucas Bergvall? In terms of his heading, it's rare for a young attacking midfielder that's noted for his guile to be as tenacious and beastly as Bergvall is. He's a real threat in the box, great sense of timing in the air, real hunger to compete for the ball and pretty damn effective, generally getting the ball very close on target, finding angles and dip, which leaves keepers feeling uneasy. He's got solidity to his frame that when he jumps into that duel, the opposition can feel his presence. And that's something very rare to possess in a young footballer that's featuring in the men's game. I also foresee a future in central midfield because he eats up goal kicks, eats up second ball situations. Again, that presence, that aura is always there when he goes in to compete for the ball. And once again, very rare for a silky playmaker type to also be that colossus in the air. But Bergvall has that steel about him and he isn't the type to get bullied in those situations. In terms of his dribbling, Bergwall is that typical genius Scandinavian talent with magic feet. Following in the footsteps of Laudrup, Eriksson, Odegaard, he's got that real flair, pulls off quite outrageous skill moves, but generally it's his balance, his ability to change in different directions, that close control of the ball that catches the eye when he's looking to beat a player. He's not someone I'd want to use as a winger because pace-wise, he's not really going to be effective if left out there on the wing in constant 1v1 situations. But when he's using the element of surprise, he can wrong foot players when he does drift out there, but generally more effective in the middle where he's more press resistant, he can find forward passes and he acts as a focal point in possession. I wouldn't want him at the base of the midfield because once again, like out wide, he relies on surprise to get past players. Whereas when you're playing as a pivot, you need to be perpetually silky and constantly get on the ball, sit deep and facilitate build up play. But I think he's more of a register type. His footwork is good enough for that role. It would allow him to sort of fake pass, chop onto the other foot and redirect play at will. In terms of goals, Bergwell has goal for it. That much is clear, picks up good positions inside the box and outside the box he drifts into good areas by the edge of the box which allow him to shoot from distance willing to pop off either foot bigger question mark is that technique he's got a finesse shot in his locker but I wouldn't say it's laser like precise at the moment so that's part of his game he needs to continue to work on and develop because for sure there's goals to be had here but how many I think that's going to be down to hard work because I wouldn't say he's naturally elite in the ball striking sense, but he's not a liability either. I think he's got fundamentals there. In terms of ceiling, I think it's quite high. It just depends long term how much work he puts into it. I can't see why he wouldn't score more than 10 goals a season. The smell for the goal, the timing of movement all seems to be in place. And his heading will also grab him goals too. In terms of Bergwald's possession game, he receives the ball well on the half turn or under pressure, knows how to protect it, and he can make great use of first touch wall passes to ensure he isn't slowing down the tempo. So he's suited to playing in a possession based side, which values technique and fast decision making. At the moment, his volume of passes per game is pretty low, but it's worth noting that at the moment he's playing across the midfield, sometimes in advanced roles, sometimes as a wide playmaker, and at other times in midfield. So that affects his ability to control the game and how many touches he gets per game. He's also only 17. So in my opinion, there's definitely growth to be seen here in terms of how many touches of the ball he gets per game, especially if he does cement himself as a full-time central midfielder in the future. I personally think he has got the hallmarks to be a regista in terms of his nuanced movements of the ball, his head-up style, the good sense of the narrative and the game flow in conjunction with his comfortable ball carrying. So personally, I'd be disappointed if by his prime, he isn't averaging 60 passes a game. The only caveat would be if he becomes a full-time attacking midfielder, in which case it's more understandable if he doesn't get on the ball as much.
In terms of his defending, Bergwall is a tenacious, scrappy individual who loves throwing himself about and getting a tackle in. In that sense, he is tailor-made for English football. He can be guilty of mistimed challenges and these can lead to fouls in dangerous positions or him being caught out of position. But when he stays on his feet, reads the game pretty well, intercepts passes and he reads the flow of where the game is headed, a trait which makes him seem beyond his years. He's got a very solid understanding of the game already and I personally wouldn't have any qualms of throwing him into the men's game already because he already seems quite a complete, mature individual. In terms of his creativity, Bergwall isn't really mind-blowing in terms of his final third passes. It all looks solid, but not something that suggests that he's going to rewrite the script in the killer passing sense. His best passes tend to come from deeper, like a midfielder who breaks the lines and grabs the odd assist. I think he's not a proper number 10 who's the main creative outlet, generating assists galore like a De Bruyne. Nevertheless, the weight of the passes in general looks decent. There's some soul in these passes. It's not impossible for him to be that match winner in terms of his passing game, but I wouldn't expect it on a regular enough basis. Hey guys, wondering what software we use to produce the state-of-the-art telestration graphics software on this video? Download Play by Metrica Sports, the essential tool for every coach and analyst. Use the link in the description to access Metrica's website and then apply the code Pythagoras in Boots at the checkout for a 10% discount. Now, long pass-wise, the stats for me feel inflated with Bergwall. I think, strangely for a technician, I don't think he's quite mastered the art of ball striking over a long distance yet. His passing can be off and weighted incorrectly. I think the vision is there, the ideas are good, but the execution is not consistently elite. And I think this needs to be fine-tuned, probably will be with experience. My gut feel is that his long passing game won't end up in the realms of your Perlo type of midfielders. And he's probably going to be more of a ball carrier, short passing type of player and not a quarterback type of centre mid who just slingshots the ball here, there and everywhere. Once again, another ball striking component which needs work and fine tuning, which is a common theme in Bergwald's game. It's not quite as elite as his ball carrying game. At times, Bergwald doesn't cross the ball, preferring to hit a lofted long pass. But I think he needs to work on his decision making as to which cross technique to use for what situation. When he does whip the ball, I think he's got fairly solid technique. I wouldn't say it's mind blowing or that his ability to pick out a man is mind blowing. But overall, I'd say it's a solid part of his game. But he needs to push it on and kick it on another level if he's going to play, say, as an attacking eight in a modern team where the half spaces are really important. Tactically, I think for Bergwall to succeed at Spurs and get into the side sooner rather than later, he has to be converted into a central midfielder. Long term also, I think that's his best role. I don't think he's got a particularly astonishing ceiling as a pure number 10. He might be able to play there for Sweden, but at club level, high level European competition, I think advanced A or Regista are better fits for him. He's quite a multifaceted player, so I can see him at times even filling in as a deep line playmaker, but generally Regista, middle of the park, is where I'd slot him in, winning those goal kicks and just controlling the play in the middle of the park, run the game. And then if you want to, ghost into attacking positions and spot the opportunity to do it at the right time. Worth noting that most players of this ilk don't play there or play well there until their mid-twenties, but physically tenacious, he can handle himself. I wouldn't want to hold his development back too much but it may still be worth using him in different positions to develop his knowledge of the game like Redknapp did with Modric. In conclusion, is he the Swedish Effenberg? Well, Effenberg was as complete a controlling midfielder as you can get, a hybrid of a Scholes and a Roy Keane, similar to Redondo, able to combine steel and silk in equal measure, but his passing technique was tremendous as well as his off-the-ball work. For me, Bergwald's ball striking underwhelms me if we're looking at an elite elite level talent but there's many assets he possesses that if he could somehow fix that particular part of his game you're looking at a very solid well-rounded player that would surely be useful for most elite sides even as a squaddy if worse came to worse I think Spurs have landed a gem here who's surely better than the likes of Skip 
and he's a player that they can build their long-term midfield around. Ange is a good fit for this type of player and he can mould him. And if he does reach his potential, well, don't be surprised if the bigger clubs come to purchase the finished product for a big fee in his mid-20s. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share and subscribe and see you guys again next time. Bye.